I went to meet expert microbiologist Dr. Martin Cormican in NUI Galway, who's been doing cutting edge research into how waste chemicals in the environment are affecting our health. And I know that if I take a sample of water from here right now, that if I take this water back to the laboratory, I can be pretty near certain that I'm going to find E. coli in that water. And there's a very good chance that I'm going to find antibiotic resistant E. coli in that water. And the reason I'm finding E. coli in the water is because there's crap in our water. So it's coming from animals, it's coming from people, it's coming from septic tanks, and it's getting into our water. Martin took me to his lab to show me some of the very concerning problems with some of the chemical pollutants that get poured down drains, flush down toilets, and get into our water systems. Can we be too obsessed with being antiseptic or obsessed with being clean, too clean? Clean is good, but clean is what you can do with soap and water or with detergent and water. You, we don't need to kill all the bacteria on the floor. We can't, and it's foolish to try, because they'll come back in the space of hours in any case. We don't need to kill all the bacteria on our skin, and people are encouraged in this idea. They're encouraged in this idea by people who want to make money by selling them chemicals putting chemical disinfectants on your floor or down your toilet, I often say to people, is only a good idea if you plan to eat off it. Martin explained that antibacterial detergents and other pharmaceuticals entering natural water systems are posing a major environmental and health issue, antibiotic resistance. Are we heading for a crisis with this? It's not even that we're heading towards a massive problem. We already have a massive problem. In 1944, original penicillin that Fleming discovered worked great. Now it's useless. We don't even try to use it because we know it won't work. Virtually every Staph aureus associated with people in the world is now resistant to an antibiotic that worked 70 years ago. Into the bottles they pour the liquid medium in which will grow the mold that produces penicillin. To meet the demands of the Allied armies on every Possibly continent. the greatest achievement penicillin in medicine in human mold. history was the discovery of penicillin. This wonder drug enabled us to kill bacterial disease for the first time, where we were now able to perform life-saving operations with less risk of infection. Science has won another victory over death. But Martin explained that effective antibiotics may be coming to an end and we could be heading to a world of no working antibiotics that can treat these rapidly emerging strains of bacteria. So why is it difficult now to find new antibiotics? The key thing about an antibiotic isn't that it kills bacteria, just you need something that kills bacteria and does no harm to the person. That's what you're looking for. Probably the antibiotics that we already have had in the last 70 years I think are probably the best ones that there were out there. Um, we need to make them last us for a lot longer and we're doing a very poor job of protecting them for the future at the moment. You can check and you can find uh, traces of antibiotics in the natural environment and most of that antibiotics is coming from the urine and the feces and the waste from people and animals who have been given antibiotics. And the antibiotic doesn't stop working because it's left your body. Antibiotics in the environment come from sources such as livestock and farms and ingested through our bodies or unused medicines and hospitals where wastewater ends up in the natural environment. These antibiotics mix with natural bacteria where they can rapidly evolve into strains of harmful microbes that are resistant to antibiotics. I think what we're doing here is we're fundamentally altering the biodiversity of the bacteria that we share the world with. And I think changing that biodiversity of the bacteria that we share the world with has huge consequences for us. The immediately obvious consequence that everyone can see now is the antibiotic resistance problem. But I think there may be other things going on as well, things that we don't, we don't even properly understand. While exploring this subject of antibiotic resistance, it turned out to be much worse than I ever considered. I went to meet Dr. Barry McMahon, Hi, Barry. who's been researching microbial resistance in Ireland's wildlife at UCD. So how prevalent is this in Ireland? Well, almost anywhere we've looked for antibiotic resistance, we've found it. So uh, we've looked for 
We've looked at it in herring gulls in Ireland's Eye. We've looked for it in lesser blackback gulls on Great Salty off the coast of, uh, off the coast of Wexford. Uh, we've looked for it in black-headed gulls in Offaly. We found it. Starlings in, uh, around the country, we, we found it. And even the deer in the Wicklow Mountains, we found it. So why is it important that it's in wildlife? I think the fact that antibiotic resistance has managed to get to far-flung places like the Arctic, the Antarctic, or even to Ireland's eye, to the seagull, to the gull colony there, is an indication of how much possible excess usage there is in clinical environments, in hospitals, or in veterinary settings. So that's really the key point: is that it is a symptom of the overusage or abusage of uh, antibiotic compounds. Each year, 100,000 kilograms of antibiotics are used in Irish agriculture. Much of this seeps back into our water systems. On top of this, we prescribe over twice the amount of antibiotics per person than some of our European neighbours. So why are we worse than most of the good countries in Europe? Why are we so bad? It's certainly a serious failure of policy, and I think the responsibility is on a number of areas. Uh, doctors and veterinarians have prescribed too many antibiotics, and we as doctors and veterinarians need to do better about how we prescribe. But we also have to share that responsibility with the wider public and with farmers who have often wanted antibiotics in situations where there were other solutions that didn't require antibiotics, or where the best thing to do was to wait and let nature take its course. Antibiotic resistance is now estimated to be costing Ireland up to 1 billion euros in healthcare services, loss of productivity and other societal costs each year. MRSA and a host of deadly new strains of antibiotic resistant infections, such as drug resistant TB, are now killing 25,000 people a year in Europe. This kills more than AIDS and is fast becoming the global health problem of our time. Scientists sometimes get accused of exaggerating things. This is a global issue and we are seeing levels of um, antibiotic resistance around the world which are absolutely frightening in terms of the fact that drugs and different treatments that were used for a, a range of different bacteria in the last 10 or 20 years are now ceasing to work. How do we deal with this problem? Well, the way that we deal with it is about getting better at, uh, first of all, the managing septic tanks, and there's some change coming on that now, which is very welcome, but it's long overdue. But also there are rules that are in place about land spreading of animal waste and making sure that those rules are complied with would help to protect the sources. So what we need to do is make sure that we have buffer zones around our rivers and catchment areas to make sure that um, faecal material is not getting in to the water. There are some simple things we can do to reduce the problem. Unused medicines should always be returned to the pharmacy and never flush down toilets or discarded into waste bins. We also need to stop them from escaping into our natural water systems, both from agricultural sources and from wastewater treatment plants.